Okay, welcome back, and uh, we're moving on to the Peter Akinola Foundation Youth Center uh, here in Nigeria. Um, some of you will know, and I think quite a lot of people should know, that uh, Peter Jasper Akinola is the former Anglican primate of the Church of Nigeria. He's also the former Bishop of Abuja, Nigeria's capital, Archbishop of Province 3, which covered the northern and central parts of Nigeria when the division into in ecclesiastical provinces was adopted in 2002. He became the first Archbishop of Abuja province, a position he held until 2010. Some of us in diaspora in those years do remember that uh, the BBC and all the other international media were always eager and keen to speak with uh, the Archbishop because of the issue of uh, the position of the clergy and of the church on the issue of uh, gay rights within the church and them becoming pastors and so on. Your Eminence, Bishop, my Lord Bishop, Archbishop, I welcome you to Sunrise this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Um, yeah. Thank you. Let's start by asking you, how does it feel to be retired without being tired? <laughs> <laughs> because I can feel the energy when you yes, breathed into look, here. Look at the cap, you know, <laughs> sitting so pretty. <laughs> it's really wonderful um, to go to retirement um, um, because uh, when you're in office, uh, you're working, and you're just walking and walking and walking, um, a time comes, uh, your life is, look, I haven't had enough. <laughs> So going to retirement for me is a ton of joy. But you look like you're still ready to do another 20 years of uh, well, active service to the Almighty God. By the grace of God, um, for as long as he empowers me, um, whatever I come to do, I will gladly do. So okay, tell us about spending your time now? I spend most of my time now with the youths, um, which we bring together from across the country. And I also do some writing. I do some travels. Um, because I have some areas of interest and concern that are ongoing ever since I've been, I was in the office. So um, those things have come to occupy my time. I okay, have more so time for the family and play with grandchildren. Family, grandchildren <laughs> yes. well, but tell us about the Peter Akinola uh, Youth uh, Foundation uh, Youth Center. The Peter Akinola Foundation was incorporated um, primarily to uh, help me advance my interest in the area of youth empowerment. Um, we've been talking a lot about unemployment for our youths. We've been talking about the restiveness of our youth in this country. And I just felt convinced that um, enough of talking led to something practical for the young ones. And so I talked to a number of friends uh, who advised that we should incorporate a foundation, which we did in 2010. And uh, thereafter, um, we looked for um, a facility where we could uh, begin the training uh, of these young people in various vocations. And um, so we started with the training in 2011 and 12. And we had the second set last year. We just had the third set a person out um, two days ago. So um, that's about the youth. But we have other initiatives and the foundation. What kind of training do you give to the youth? In various vocations, uh, such as electrical installation, um, plumbing, tiling, uh, fashion designing, uh, catering, um, computer studies, just name it. Now that's an excellent initiative, but what kind of numbers do you have in terms of uh, the number of young people that come and take advantage of this initiative? Well, when we started, um, we are not exactly sure how to move about this. I mean, I've been a pastor, my bishop, but I know <laughs> for the last 40 years, so, so we had to try to find a way of learning the ropes, as it were. So we started very small, with only 20, 29 students but from across the country. And then last year, we had 56. Mm. This year, we had 81. So next year, we are hoping we'll have up to 200. So we're moving on gradually. 
Um, okay, so. that's good. Now, with all of that, what would you say you really want to achieve with this? Because you said this initiative is not just what you've just uh, stated, there is more. It looks like there's a lot more you're planning to do with this foundation. Yes. Um, in addition to the youth empowerment, um, I do some writings on current issues um, that affect my country and other parts of the world, especially in the area of corruption. Um, also, we do some consultation and give advice to other primates and bishops, um, especially in Africa, about how to move about doing their work, since I have passed through those roads before them. So we do that also, but quietly. Uh, okay, well, I, I would uh, like to know what, how do you see the Nigerian youth? All right. Um, three years ago, it was widely reported that there were about 40 million Nigerians who were unemployed. Many of them university graduates. It was also added that many of them were simply unemployable. Parents were complaining. These young people were there on the street. As private of Nigeria, I traveled extensively to virtually every part of the country. And I saw these young people in the morning, in the afternoon, roaming the streets, jobless, doing nothing. So I felt that um, it was time that I did something on my own. Um, so I put this youth people together, bring them in, and stay with us for nine months and they undergo very intensive medical training in any field of their choice, any training trade of their choice. And that's what we've been doing. Uh, it should have been there two days ago at the pastoral ceremony. Parents were shedding tears of joy to see their children acquiring skills and having been transformed. Because our training is not just um, the um, skill acquisition, which is very important, but we do that in the context of um, moral um, transformation of these young people, um, changing of their mindset, um, having them come to believe that they too can become important citizens of this country. So all this goes together um, in our training program. Um, we have people, wonderful people, who come around to give them special classes uh, in civic responsibility, in entrepreneurship, um, um, godliness, and all that. And so those who pass through our center um, go out as um, wonderful, well potential, well-rounded future leaders of this country. So okay. do you get any kind of support from state or federal government? At this point, no. Um, all we are doing so far have been on the basis of what I had and massive support from a few friends uh, who believe in what we are doing. Uh, some of my friends um, in the, on the Board of Trustees they lend a lot of helping hand. And if you have friends out there uh, who see what we are doing as one of the way forward for the Nigerian youths, they also give us a lot of um, support. So how yeah. can the youth latch on to this? What do they need to do to be part of this uh, initiative? Well, it's very simple. Um, we have a website, peteraconefoundation.org. Um, log in there, and you'll see all the details. Um, the application for admission is there online. You can download it and um, complete it and send it to us on your own. Do they have any qualification they must have? When we started, we did not put any emphasis on qualifications mm -hmm. because the concern was simply to take them off the street, regardless of where they are in life. But now we are moving to the next level um, because we felt it was important that they get some certification that will be recognized by industries and other potential employers. So we are now working with um, the National Board for Technical Education as well as London Stern Guild, and they require that our trainees have some basic qualification, a minimum of school cert. Um, so will that school cert have to be three passes, five credits? Three six? passes, five passes, whatever. But in this last set, surprisingly,